Now, the issue, the very serious issue of vaccinations has been a hot topic this year, filling social media pages at least. Now, of course, the HPV vaccine for cervical cancer attracted controversy in the US with suggestions that it could cause injury or even death. Well, let's try and clear up that confusion. And we're joined by virus expert David Hawkes. Hi. Thanks for having me Good on. Good morning. It's a sort of interesting top, a title, a virus expert. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a virologist and, and I've sort of, I did a PhD on HIV, but this is actually something that I've never actually, this is not my job, I don't get paid to do this, I'm just really passionate about combating misinformation about vaccines. Tell us about how this misinformation came about, because of course we, it, it, was, it sort of started in Australia, this vaccine, and was extremely lauded for what it could do. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, it's, it's really interesting because it, it's so recent. It was introduced in Australia in 2007. We have all this ability to actually monitor everything. Like when it was released uh, in Australia, it had a really good safety profile. In America, for, for a variety of reasons, some states made it compulsory really early and, and there's obviously a much higher religious background in, in certain states there. Um, there was, all, there was a, a lot more uproar. Like the same vaccine in Australia has less than half the side effects than it does in the US. Um, which is due to the system where you can just report any sort of side effect you have. So if you get a, a vaccine, the most common one everyone's aware of is a sore arm. You get a bit of redness, sore arm, maybe feel a little off for a day or two. And this is a side effect. In Australia for the HPV vaccine, they, they did a study a couple of years after it came out and it's 93% of all the reports were this. In America, there's, there's a lot of reports of death, but when these have actually been investigated, they're found to either not to have occurred or to have actually occurred in exactly the same percentage as they would in the unvaccinated population. Tell us about the TV show um, in, in the US that, um, that sparked controversy with uh, Katie Couric. Um, as a respected broadcaster, she was a newsreader on NBC and presented and if, the Today program for many years. In fact, years. after the program, she's since made some um, some concessions uh, about it being uh, uh, not very balanced at all. Can you, can you just tell us about that? So, uh, Katie Couric, there was, there was a lot of lead up that she was going to do a, a TV show on the HPV controversy, and and that's always a red flag, and it's something that tabloid television has a habit of creating a debate where no debate exists. And so she had a parent who said that their child had died, another parent who said that their child was very ill. Didn't actually happen to mention that one of the parents is on the board of one of the biggest anti-vaccination organisations in, in America, if not the world. And all these claims, and didn't put them into any context. So as I said, anyone can make a report and, and this woman's daughter died and that was a tragedy. But because someone had a vaccine, and then died at some point afterwards. I know with the initial group of deaths, the average start of symptoms after the vaccine was four and a half months. But there's, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly can't sort of criticise a grieving mother, but it's just, it's not actually what's actually happening. Mm. And so this is what kicked up with Katie So Curie. do the, the authorities in the US try and counter this because they believe it's obviously valuable for people to be vaccinated for this? Absolutely, and they try and counter it with, information and with you know the, there's a lot of scientists who actually get out there and go on Twitter and go on Facebook and, th and that's what I spend a lot of my time doing but HPV since the the vaccine has been introduced in Australia genital warts have dropped by 90 percent in heterosexuals under 21 uh, 70 percent of infections with the the vaccine uh, strains that cause cancer dropped by 77 percent um, all these figures are just showing how amazing this, this vaccine is actually working. And, and that's really all you can do because, yeah, it's just really, really complicated. Well, so what is the, uh, what is, is there a failing of information that uh, the people consider this to be a debate and not a discussion? I mean, you'd be asked questions all the time around, um, uh, are, there, are there dangers? What is Japan doing with this? So there's lots of questions. Um, should the medical um, fraternity be better at, at getting information out there? Uh, absolutely, and I, and I think this is also where social media has really played a role. Before that, you could you could go on a TV show or you mm. could write a, an article in the paper and people could get their information, but people are actually much more interactive. So I think I joined Twitter at the beginning of this year and I've had 5,000 tweets and the majority of them have been people asking me questions yeah. and trying to clarify information they've read. Most people... Uh, who don't vaccinate or are a little worried about it have just been given misinformation. There's, 
a lot of anti-vaccination organisations that have a lot of money and have really tried to push their agenda and it's not actually based on the science. So if in doubt, go to the doctors and get the medical advice straight from the horse's mouth, right? Yeah, than... or there's uh, Immunisation, Immunise Australia is a great resource, the NCRS, which is uh, .edu.au, is another great resource that provides all this information. Um, and it doesn't give false balance, so it doesn't say, you know, this will kill you. It says this can cause side effects, it can maybe make you faint, sore arm, that sort of stuff gives the risks and benefits of the vaccine and allows people to make an informed decision. Dr. Dog, thanks for coming in. We appreciate your time. No thanks for having me on. Thank you.